Hey guys, MCU Collector here, back at it with a new review. So San Diego Comic Con has come and gone. I've gone back to work. I'm still tired like crazy, but you know what? The reviews got to keep on coming, right? Right? So next up is the Target exclusive Marvel uh, Avengers Infinity War, the 80th anniversary Marvel 80 years. Um, at Comic Con, Entertainment Earth was selling this for Target um, as Entertainment Earth was selling several of their exclusives. Um, so I was able to get it then. It is street dated for July 28th, but if you pre-order online, I believe you can have, you can pick up in store on the 27th or something along those lines. Uh, but here we have it, and I can't wait to open it up, and I will be comparing him with the previous release of the Mark 50 and the Iron Spider figure, but I already know that this two pack is pretty awesome. My son wanted it from Comic-Con. That's the thing that he wanted the most. I bought it for him and he was messing with it. I was messing with it a little bit and it is a really awesome set that I think is absolutely worth it and something everyone should pick up if you're an MCU fan. Now I know the previous Iron Spider figure was a huge letdown. This one knocks it out of the park. Those uh, Waldos or spider legs um, are, are pretty awesome. But we'll get to that here pretty soon. Avengers Infinity lo uh, War logo, Iron Man Mark 50, Iron Spider. Here on the side of the package, we get a look at the Iron Spider. On the other side, we get a look at the Iron Man Mark 50 suit. Here we have a poster of Avengers Infinity War. And why, for some reason, and I don't understand this, is that the Avengers Infinity War poster on the back of the package actually removed or digitally removed or something is up with it they actually removed the iron spider that's actually supposed to be in the center um, of the poster and i don't know what's going on with that and why he was removed but here looking at it here is the actual poster right and the iron spider see he's right there so why he was removed from this image i have no idea so it's a very odd thing my son noticed that he said why is iron spider not on there and i'm like he should be, and then I couldn't find him when we looked it up. It's kind of weird. Let's take a look at those bios. Iron Man Mark 50. Tony Stark uses the nanotech-powered Mark 50 armor to take on Thanos. Stored in a removable arc reactor, the armor can be completely reformed and reshaped based on Stark's needs in battle. Pretty cool. Iron Spider. The Iron Spider armor was created by Tony Stark for use by Peter Parker. Equipped with nanotechnology, the suit can create four spider legs controlled by Peter's mind that give him increased maneuverability and control during combat. So really, really cool. Here is a look at the UPC. Sorry guys, I don't have the DPCI. If I get it, then I will put it down here or something on the screen for you guys to see. But what an awesome two-pack, a new Tom Holland head sculpt. Let's get right to it and open these up. Just a little teaser to kind of show you guys how it's in package. So you have the figures, and then there is a separate layer here which then has the spider legs as well as these, um, these blaster pieces here. So pretty cool. Okay, and here are the figures out of the package. And I must say, these are two much needed upgrades from the previous figure. So I, again, I will do a comparison of that. And we're gonna start with Iron Spider. So I'm gonna show you how to put on those spider legs, show you the figure, do the articulation and the comparison, then we'll move on to Iron Man. So Iron Spider's first up, here we go. Okay, so here are the two Iron Spider figures side by side, and I'm gonna go over the differences. There's not much. The sculpt is gonna be completely the same, but the big changes are you see on the left, which is the new one, the head sculpt does have a little bit of gloss to it. They actually added some of that glossy paint to it, whereas the one on the right is kind of dull. Same with the hands. You can see glossy hands on the new one, dull hands on the old one. Then here on the legs, we had kind of a dull, red on the calves and now we have kind of a glossy red there um, other than that pretty much the same um, looking at the red throughout the torso we get a little bit of a brighter red on the new one whereas this one it looks like you know one one coat of paint over the blue wasn't cutting it as much whereas this new one we actually get um, a deeper red and then we get these gauntlet pieces for the uh, the web shooters or however that works and then looking at the back of the figure for the spider legs all they did was glue on or attach somehow I think it's just glued on um, this piece which the spider legs actually pour right on into. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Now as far as I can tell, these things are all the same. It doesn't matter in which particular order that you're going to port them into the back of the figure because they can all kind of rotate and have all kinds of points of articulation. So I'm just going to kind of go right at it. They just port 
right on in the back and you can um, take them off and remove them um, as much as you want although I will tell you to be careful but my son being eight years old can be a little rough with his toys um, and he seems to be able to take them in and out um, several times without any problem so not that I necessarily recommend doing that but if an eight-year-old can do it constantly back and forth I'm thinking that there really shouldn't be any issue taking these out, um, taking these in and out if that's what you wanted to do. But for me, in my collection, these things will stay on because I will just feel better with them staying on. And they just port in like so. And they don't really get in the way, but I guess that could take up a lot of space. So let's zoom out and take a better look at this guy. Okay, so here is Iron Spider figure. Now, a couple of things. Hasbro made this nearly perfect. A couple of things that obviously would have improved on this figure if the spider legs were even more accurate and actually had some blue in them. Um, right now, they're just a solid gold. There's no blue paint whatsoever, but blue would have made it movie accurate. The other thing is interchangeable hands. So just like the previous figure, we get nothing but the uh, thwipping hands for, uh, for Spider-Man, so no fists, open hands, or anything like that, um, and no wall crawling hands. Now, this, these gauntlet pieces actually don't want to come off. So they're on there pretty tight. I don't think they're glued, but they're on there pretty tight. Let's see on this other side if I can get it a little bit loose. No, they're on there kind of good. So those things aren't going to be falling off or anything, um, but that is going to get in the way of the articulation because that is going to stop that hinge from going back just so you guys know. So looking at the figure, I am gonna go over the articulation of these spider legs. Now each one has the same articulation. So I'm only gonna show you one, but you can get a full entire 360 degree rotation in there. There is a ball joint um, there, which get ball joint hinge. So you can hinge out to there and then you can hinge it a full 90 degrees maybe a little bit more so all kinds of motion there then the next joint we get another ball hinge so you can kind of move it around so you can hinge it as far as that way back and then going forward you get a 90 degree hinge there there is also a full swivel at that hinge and then the next uh, point of articulation is the same thing. The ball hinge, so you get a full hinge and then to 90 degrees, and then you also get a swivel at that hinge here at the end. Um, that's it actually, and it's a little bit rubbery as you get towards the end, but there's some nice sculpted detail in there. And let's zoom in so you guys can take a look at that. So you can see the sculpted detail. No paint color or anything in there, but the sculpt of it looks pretty nice. Again, it's around again, full swivel in there, so you can get these spider legs into all crazy different kinds of poses. Okay, and here are the spider legs when as they are fully extended out to the longest that they can reach. You can see that they are pretty long. Okay, so I'm going to run through the articulation pretty quick here because I have reviewed, you know, this figure in the past. So his head can look up, he can look, uh, he can look down, he can look up. There is a full swivel there, of course. A little bit of pivot in the neck. Shoulders can go out that high. There is a butterfly joint in there to bring him forward that much and go back that much. There's not a huge amount of motion, but there's a pretty good motion there. You get an upper bicep swivel there, double jointed elbow. There is a swivel and hinge at the wrist, but again, hinging back is going to be difficult because with these new web shooter gauntlet pieces there. Ab crunch can crunch forward that much. You can't crunch back that much, so the spider legs are not hindering that at all. Waist swivel there. Legs go out that far apart. They can kick forward front that much, which is a huge amount. Back ever so slightly. Upper thigh cut there. Double jointed knee. No boot swivel, but foot hinges down. Hinges up slightly, and then we do get an ankle pivot. Now let's see this new Tom Holland head. 
And here is an up close of the new Tom Holland head sculpt, and I think it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, uh, but I like it. And, you know, side profile looks more so like him than looking at it straight on. I know a lot of people have joked and said it looks like Harley Keener from Iron Man 3, or it looks like um, somebody else. I know there's a couple of names getting thrown around, but you know what? I think it's good. It's a huge, huge improvement from this thing, you know, and at the time, I think I praised this at one time, but man, the more you look at it, the uglier it is, plus it's too big, and it's really based on his look from Civil War, not from Homecoming um, at all. So I do really like that. Now the trick is to see if it actually works on some of the other Spider-Man figures. So we're going to pop this up, head off, and we're going to see if it fits on the Homecoming Spider-Man. So pop that ugly thing off. And we could put this one on there and it just sits on there. It doesn't really fit. And it sits, I would say, too high and then doesn't really look good. But I think the size of it is a good size. It's just too high up on the neck. But it fits the body a little bit better. Now, far from home, Spider-Man, let's see if it fits on this guy. And it does! Look at that. Clips right on. It might be a little high, but you know what? I think... That looks pretty good. It's just a little too high on there, a little too much neck, but it fits, so I like that. Next is the Night Monkey figure. Let's see if it fits on that guy, and this head does not want to come off. There it goes. Let's see if we can get it on this one, and you can! And again, neck is way too high, but it does fit. But I do think it looks good. Okay, and here are the two Iron Man figures side by side, and they're completely the same. Um, the biggest difference, or really the only difference, um, is going to be in the color of the red plastic. So the one on the left, the new one, is more of a metallic color. Now, that's the actual plastic. It is not paint or anything like that, because you do get some of the marbleization throughout. And I don't think it's coming through, but I have some marbleization there. Um, on the chest torso piece. So that's just in the plastic and it makes a huge difference because it makes it look so much better and this one looks real cheap next to it. And if we're talking about cheap, this one looks even worse. This is the 10th Marvel Studios 10th anniversary one. I know it's not much different from this one, but there's something about the torso that just doesn't work for me. But there it is. The only other difference really is going to be they actually drilled a hole in the back of the new one to support this new um, blaster effect piece, which just ports right into the back of the figure. See the peg there? You just plug it in, and then it looks like he has those floating pieces on that street scene um, against Ebony Maw and Cole Obsidian, where they just kind of come out of his back, and they're there, and they do a little blast effect. So that is pretty cool. I like the way they look. They have that gunmetal gray silver painted down the middle. The rest of it is red. One thing I think would have been nice if maybe like the center strip or something was done with a white or bluish color to look like it, you know they were firing up. That would have been really cool. And I really like here that you know it, it's kind of hidden. It blends in with the background background since it's a clear plastic. Here it is from the back. Now all these pieces can be removed. They just port right on in there like so. Not sure what you could do with them as they're you know not ported in. This one doesn't want to come off for some reason, but you know my sons all came off. So it's there. You can pull them off and then just plug them right back in like so and that is pretty cool now this Iron Man was pretty uh, accessory heavy so not only did he come with these blast effects that go on his back he also came with the two blast effects that port into the hand this is the same blast effects we've seen a million times there's no frosted white paint on these ones whatsoever um, but they do port into his hands which are actually inside there so these uh, cannon pieces that came um, additionally also just kind of fit over the arm so really you just kind of pop the hand off and then just slip it over his arm uh, for the blast effect and I think they look pretty good it's a fairly soft plastic but it's not going to remo really move around too much there's some paint on there we get some gold in here some gold there on the side as well as there um, and then some of that gunmetal silver on the top there. And I really like the way it looks, the sculpt of it looks nice as well. The two pieces that it comes with are the same and they can go on either hand. So not bad 
nice little touch. As far as additional accessories, we get additional hands, which are the fist hands for Iron Man. They are not for the Iron Spider figure, unfortunately, so we can change out the hands there. And then the last accessory that he comes with is this really cool looking shield. Um, it's a little bit short. I won't say that in the movie the shield would have been a lot taller, uh, but it does look good. We get that same red metallic paint there, and then we get some gold um, to accent it there. And you can see how it goes on there. It would really just clip onto his arm like so, and he would have the shield. So that's pretty cool. I like the way that looks. So we're going to get right into the articulation. I'm going to go over it fast because basically have reviewed this figure two times. So he can look down all the way. Can get him to look up all the way as well. There's a full swivel of the head. Not a whole lot of pivot in there. Shoulders go out that far. This ball joint, you know, he has some of the biggest shoulders I've ever seen on an Iron Man figure. Upper bicep swivel there, double jointed elbow, the hands all swivel and they hinge as hard as it is to get it, they do hinge. There's no ab crunch, there is a diaphragm joint which limited motion, pivot to the side that way, pivot to the side that way, can go back slightly, forward, very, 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 very little because you have this piece and there's just no wiggle room in there. No waist swivel, legs go out that far apart, upper thigh cut there, leg kicks forward that much, goes back a tiny bit, double jointed knee, which doesn't give a whole lot, but it does give you some. There's no boot swivel, but foot hinges down, hinges all the way up, and then we do get a nice ankle pivot in there. And he is a awesome upgrade to a rather lackluster figure, we'll call it. Just not a good figure. Okay, so there is my review. You guys let me know what you guys think uh, about these two figures down in the comments below. Are you guys gonna be picking up this set? Um, or are you just gonna pass because it's just more reissues that Hasbro keeps giving us? I, for one, am happy because this is the Iron Man we should have gotten in the first place, and of course, the Iron Spider figure that we should have gotten in the first place. So I am happy with this two-pack and glad to add them to my MCU collection because, again, all MCU figures I am extremely happy to add to my collection, no matter if it's a reissue, repaint, same costume, same figure, except that Captain America, that 2012 Captain America. But anyway, very happy to have this. If you guys liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.